podcast. I am Caleb Albers. And I am Jonathan Rose. We are a couple of aspiring filmmakers that love to watch and critique movies, but also enjoy a lot of bit of the nerd life. Uh, this week on the podcast, we are going to be talking about um, the Road to Infinity War progress again. It's just going to be a weekly thing now until Infinity War's up. Um, so this week we got the Avengers, and then, or we're going to be watching the Avengers. Then next week we'll be watching Iron Man 3. After that, we are going to be discussing the uh, trailers and TV spots that we got over the Super Bowl weekend. And gotta say, pretty freaking great TV spots. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So we got th- three of those um, that we're going to be discussing. One for uh, Solo. And that's just going to be the uh, the trailer that we talk about with that one. Um, Jurassic World TV spot and the Infinity War TV spot. And then after all of that, we will be doing for our main event a Dreamcast of The Purge. Or of what our Purge movie would be like. Yeah, boy. Yeah, so Rose is super excited for this oh, one. Yeah. Got my notes and everything. Got your notes. <laughs> Got your notes. <laughs> um, all right, so last week we watched Captain America. Yeah, Captain America, the first Avenger. Gotta say, freaking love that movie oh, still. Dude, yeah, it still holds up. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a, a lot of... Um, Like, the origin of Captain America has always pretty been, always been pretty much in throughout, and I liked how they were able just to keep it original, how it was with that one. Yeah. I'm they didn't still change am- it too much. Sorry. Um, I'm still amazed of how, I think, I still think, uh, like, the CGI head that they took of Chris Evans and put it on someone else's body for when he was, like, really, really small, I still think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they. I think well, they did the best they, they could. could. So, like, if you have to be re- for me, you, I have to be really paying attention to yeah, notice it. Agreed. But like last week when I was just watching it to watch it, it's it holds up. Yeah, it's something it's you don't even notice or really care about. It's because the movie's that good. Yeah, the movie's fantastic. If the movie is that good. You don't. You, you can look past downfall like that. Yeah, you don't play around. Nope. Um, then we got pretty much the movie that started it all. Yeah. The Avengers this uh, week. Dude, do you remember? Do you still remember when we actually saw that in theaters together? Dude, I of course I remember it. That was just great. Koi? No, I hope Koi's not listening to this. Your brother, but I'm sorry, he would not shut up. Well, he wouldn't shut. He wouldn't. He wasn't talking a lot. But at some person, he'd like reach over and be like, Rose, what do you think of something? Like, Koi, shut up, please. <laughs> Dude, he doesn't usually come to movies with us, but it's always like the big ones, yeah. isn't it? Because mm-hmm. we had that ordeal with uh, Civil War. <laughs> no, Age of Ultron. What? Remember with Age of Ultron, I missed. Oh, was it no, Civil War? No, that was Civil War. War. Yeah, Age of Ultron was just us. Uh yeah, dude. Are you sure? Uh huh. That's not the seat mix up? Nope. Yeah, no. The seat mix up was with Captain America Civil War. Oh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he came with us to Age of Ultron. No, uh uh-uh, Because we saw Age of Ultron at midnight. Oh, uh, yep. That's true. Yeah. Okay, then I guess I can't say that he's been with us in all the big ones. I mean, but he's been to us with. He's been with us. And I'll, start, I'll never forget how, like, stupid my shirt looked the night that we saw the Avengers, because your mom. Helped me tape a poster of Hawkeye to a black shirt, and it looked so retarded. Yeah, I told you not to. I'm sure. Yeah, I know. You did. <laughs> I'm sure people were laughing their ass off. Just I was. Shut. Wow. <laughs> wow, bro. Hey, I told you not to. Well, I told you you're gonna make get made fun of. Hawkeye fans <laughs> just are gonna, just gonna get made fun of by me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Something like that kind of is, is going on topic something like that happened to me when i was i don't know like so transformers 2 came out in like what like 09 or 010 or 10 whatever i don't know i 
I I didn't watch the Transformers until it came out on DVD. Oh, you didn't? Okay, well, I, I remember because uh, my dad took me to go see it, and so I wore my Autobot t-shirt, and I went to go see given the fact I was like probably like 13 or 12, and, um, you know, uh, still, I was, I was still a kid at heart. So I wore that, oh, I still am a kid at heart. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what are you talking yeah, about? Right? <laughs> um, so I wore that to when me and my dad saw it, and this kid that was passing me as I was going to the bathroom was like, are you serious, man? That's so childish. Like, dude, I'm only like 12. Am I really that childish wearing an Autobot shirt? I would have flipped the dude off. I should have. Dude, I don't, like, I think our childless level, like, how many professional looking shirts do you own? Like, without logos and stuff? Like, ones that you would wear to a casual business or, like, a job interview. Nice. About six. And how many shirts do you own that have, like, a logo of something that you enjoy? Not as many as you. No? Like, no, like, from what, like, actually... Oh, maybe still, it's just me, then. <laughs> from actually what still fits me, because uh, I still haven't sh- thrown away my old, like, junior high shirts. Um, because I still got, like, the Mario and Sonic kind of shit in my closet. I really need to go through it. Um... <laughs> Probably like five, if that. Oh, maybe it's just me. How many do you have? A lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a rare occasion you see Caleb not wearing a superhero t-shirt. And when I'm not, it's usually because I'm doing something important that day. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm doing something where I need to look professional, or yeah, yeah. Brielle just kind of gives up on me, and she's just <laughs> like, "You're not wearing that." I'm like, "What? Why?" Oh. Uh... Uh, I thought we were going to be evenly matched there. <laughs> no, nope, I so own not. at least sh- a lot of the sh- professional looking shirts that I own don't fit me anymore. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Like I had um, like a couple black t-shirts, a, a green one, some, some red ones, and they were all when I was wearing like V-neck shirts, not like super deep V, just like slight. That's what I'll usually wear nowadays. Is just V-neck shirts. Yeah, those don't fit me anymore. Uh, the only reason I have so many dress-up shirts is because, um, like, during either, like, the Super Bowl or, like, a certain holiday, uh, Fresh Market lets us wear, like, a different color than our regular black, uh, shirt, which I hate because there's no collar, and I hate stuff touching my neck, so I hate that my apron is, you know, loose, or, you know, whatever. Um, so basically that whatever day that we can actually wear something different I'll just buy like a collared t-shirt that is that re- represents that either team from Super Bowl which I didn't even do that this year I totally forgot um, or like that holiday hmm. so yeah cool totally went off topic there we're sure guys yeah we do yeah that's true. Very true we get off topic a lot we try to stay on but it just doesn't work so we're just not even going to try anymore yeah um so next week we got Iron Man 3. Um, luckily I have that one so I don't have to watch it it's maybe illegally. I don't want to incriminate myself. You should have <laughs> possibly. said that out loud. I said possibly illegally. The biggest thing I remember from Iron Man 3 is uh, your mom was skeptic about us going to it because I think we went on like a Friday night. She was skeptic because of course a year before that the... Um, the uh, Colorado movie theater shooting happened. Yeah. I remember that. Well, we're adults. <laughs> yeah. Don't mean to be a downer there, but that's what I remember most about Iron Man 3. Hannah was a really good movie. I remember making that joke to my mom. I'm like, Mom, we're adults. Now let us go watch our superhero movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think after I made that joke, she's like, you know what? Go. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, that pretty much covers our Road to Infinity War progress. Um, so let's just get into this week's sneak peeks. Is that what we're calling it now? Oh, the... well, yeah, that one's the... Oh, well, that's what we've always called it? No, so news is through the wall, and then trailers is this week's Oh, sneak I never peeks. even noticed that. Wow. And I'm the co-host of this shit. Yeah, wow. you are. What the hell? We came up with that one together. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Rose. Fail. Shut up. 
Yeah, so whenever we do trailers, it's this week's sneak peeks. Whenever it's like news and stuff, it's through the wall. And then Dreamcast is when we find someone that we want to play a certain character, and so we do a little Dreamcast thing. Or if we do a story like we did with Fantastic Four, and like what we're doing tonight. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, you get it. Yay. Then our reviews are the All Bros Breakdown. And then our main event. I'm just. I'm thinking of just making the, the All Bros Breakdown and replacing that with main event. So we can. What do you think? Yeah, okay, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Then we got Adventures in Hunting, which is Pops and Blu ray. Yeah. Which we haven't been doing very often lately. Then we have a reference fail tally that we'll be doing at the end of the show now. And then we, if we tie at the end of the month, we'll be we'll do okay, a. Wait, are you telling me all this, or are you explaining it again to the audience? I'm explaining this to you because apparently Dude, you forgot. No, that's the only thing that I didn't remember was that. <laughs> so you don't have to like treat me like a child here and go through every little single thing. <laughs> well, don't forget shit, and I won't have to. Well, it was one thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Solo. We got that a Star Wars story. Not just Solo. Solo. I'm is... calling it Solo. No. I'm s- it pisses me off when... Well, it pisses one... me off when you're this anal about what? it. <laughs> <laughs> Rogue One is fine just calling it. But Solo, I feel, needs to be called Solo, a Star Wars story. That's a mouthful. I don't get... So is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Star Wars The Force Awakens. I don't say that. I say The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi. <sighs> And then, then you're like, you have a coronary explode. You're disgracing the Star Wars name. That's rude. I'm a rude person. Anyway, Solo. <laughs> I hate you. Oh, shit. You got, like, a vein that's about to pop in your head. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this trailer was pretty great. Yeah. That's I, like, it. it wasn't the story that got me. With this, it was mainly the visuals. Okay, that's fair. Like the, um, like the ships coming out of the smoke. Yeah, everything with Millennium Falcon looked badass. Yeah, because the Millennium Falcon needs to be badass. Oh, yeah, of course. And I like how they were. I'm hoping that that was like a hallway in the Millennium Falcon. They should have shown us a more iconic part of the ship instead of just the freaking hallway. But True. it looked freaking crisp. It did. I agree. Like brand new. Um, I wonder if this is when uh, Han Solo gets. Well, obviously he gets the Millennium Falcon in this. But I wonder how new the Millennium Falcon is. Yeah, that's a good question. Because it looks like brand spanking new. Yeah, it does. Um. So there was a clip of Lando that we got in the TV spot that we didn't get in the trailer, where he was like standing and it was like all smoky around him. Yeah, and wasn't he wearing that big coat? Yeah. Yeah. That looked pretty cool. That did look very cool. It bothered me when you see Han Han in one of those coats. Yeah. Because it that doesn't really fit him. It doesn't. Fits Lando, but not. He um, feels like it. She should be wearing like a uniform, like. Han, yeah, Han should be wearing a uniform yeah. with like an overcoat, like he did in Force Awakens when they got on the. The. Um, First Order's, big ass Death Star. I can't remember what it's called. So. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, shit! You I'm gonna get. Lucky duck. <laughs> Yeah, but they're their Death Star. Yeah, thing. So that's like what I see him. I don't see him in a freaking Game of Thrones looking. Yeah, kind. I don't either. That's like don't console. like Lando makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff we saw. So in the TV spot, it showed gives a little more story. To it, I felt. I know, because I've only seen the TV spot once. I've watched the trailer three times. So at the beginning, it looks like he's talking to an officer of the Empire. 
trying to enlist and become a pilot. Casey, I didn't notice that. Or I didn't catch that. I'm just blind. Yeah, so... Um, at least that's what I caught. It it didn't that's show cool. that in the, the trailer that got released the next day. Um, but they show like a a pod, not a pod race, like a car chase. And the car chase looked basically like they were just doing a, uh, like a, it just looked like a car chase where they like CGI had the wheels out because yeah, it like moved exactly like a freaking car. Yeah. Um, so I'd say let's get to, let's talk about, um, the cast. Um, all what's his name? All Alden Enric. I pulled it up here. Alden and yeah, Alden Erenic. I want to say that. Is that how you think you would say it? Alden Renner. Ren- Ren- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> However you sure. say that. Yeah. Whatever. Um. I'm not getting Han Solo vibe at I'm all. Not either. Dude, he needs. He needs to get that. Like, this just seems like someone trying to prove himself. Han Solo, I feel, doesn't need to. He knows he's the best. Yeah, exactly. Like, maybe he, maybe even in this, he doesn't have the experience that the Han Solo we know has. But I feel that he would still be a freaking cocky asshole. That's true. One thing I've noticed, apparently with um, the Star Wars spinoff story... It always um, revolves around a, a team getting together. Woody Harrelson says, Hey kid, I'm getting a team together. You in? And Rogue One, they get a team together. It's it's kind of funny. It is funny. It's not... Like a movie like that, I feel like an entire team, like they have that uh, Kira girl played by Amelia Clark. Yeah. Um, not complaining about that because Amelia sure. Clark is... Hmm. She's beautiful. She's something. What? Nothing. That just was weird. <laughs> For me saying she's beautiful? I was going to say she's hot. Shame on you. What do you mean shame on me? She, she is. is. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife is in the next room. Shh. She, well, she knows. Oh, okay. All right. I'm pretty sure Amelia Clark's on both of our cheat lists. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because that makes it, yeah, that definitely makes it better. <laughs> Kinda. I think. I think she just wants to be friends with Amelia Clark because she uh, seems like such a fun person. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't want to be just friends. <laughs> okay, can we move on? Because that's you're putting that image in my head. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, get out of my brain. Okay. I hate you. That's rude. Um. It is. But you just put that image in my head, so thank you. <laughs> Grow up, Rose. I'm trying. So yeah, Amelia it's Clark's hard. in it. Not complaining, but this movie could have been a duel, like a duo, a Han and Lando movie. Just, yeah. Because that's kind of what the vibe that I got from the the original trilogy is that it was just them kind of taking the world on together. I would agree. And then they played a poker game where Lando lost the Millennium Falcon and Han Solo's like, deuces. <laughs> yeah, I hate that Donald Glover doesn't talk at all in the trailer. Yeah. It's like, what the hell? I, a, I think he was a great choice to play Lando. Do you think he's going to talk like himself or do you think he's going to talk like Lando? 50-50. Because Lando doesn't really have a noticeable accent, but I think he does have a certain way of talking. Yeah. I mean, does, does Han Solo kind of have a certain way of talking? Of course he does. Yeah, because whatever, whatever the hell his name is, he's really not catching on to that. Or the Alden guy? Yeah. 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 The, the, they should have gotten the guy from Age of Adeline. I, don't I showed think, you. Well, yeah, but I don't even think he was in the running to play him. He should have been. He, he had the Harrison Ford talk freaking spot on. The only other ones I know that were in talks or in the running were Ansel Elgore from Baby Driver. Um, 
You ever seen The Fault in Our Stars? I have seen The Fault in Our Stars, I but think... I don't know if he can pull off a Han. Okay, that's fair. Um, and then, um, I forget his name. He plays the main guy in the Maze Runner series. Um... Does this count as a reference fail if I get it? Yeah, I guess it can. Sweet. Dylan O'Brien. Damn it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I don't... I don't... He would have been better than the other dude. I would have been interested to see Dylan O'Brien actually as Han Solo. That was actually the one that I was rooting for. Was him. Because after seeing the Maze Runner, I'm like, okay, I could maybe see him pulling off Han Solo. Then they announced this guy. I'm like, who the hell is he? Everyone was like, who the hell is this? <laughs> um... Woody Harrelson was good, though, in it. I mean, we only got one line. Just the, hey, kid, I'm putting together a team. You in? Dude, Woody Harrelson could play, like, anyone. He can. Like, a spe- like a lot of his roles take me for a loop because it, like it's just little things that he changes that, like, make him hard to recognize, like, real quick. Yeah. Like, um... In Edge of Seventeen, he had that, like, a look. And then, watching Hunger Games, he had, like, the long hair. And I was like, oh, shit, that's Woody Harrelson. Yeah. And then, in this one, he has, like, a comb over. And I'm just, like, it took me a second. I'm like, that looks like Woody Harrelson. (laughs) And then I watched it again. like, oh, shit, that is Woody. (laughs) Like, that's how, that's how I see Woody Harrelson. It's just kind of like, I don't notice him at first. But he's, like, so good he in is. everything that he does. Oh, I agree. I love him as an actor. It's kind of like... I think I can... T- he doesn't have a, oh, it's that guy from this movie. He doesn't have that feel. Yeah, he doesn't. It. He, it's kind of like the relationship that I have... Not relationship. The view that I have of Peter Dinklage... I don't see, oh, that's Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones, or, oh, that's the angry elf from Elf. I see, oh, that's whatever character he's playing. I forget like, his character. Oh, please tell me you don't remember it. Uh, his character's name is Pixels. Oh, I, oh, I haven't seen that movie. Whew, thank goodness. I haven't, like, watched it intently. It's like a... It's a... I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Peter Dinklage is probably one of the best parts of the whole movie. Oh, absolutely, dude. Yeah. He's, like, with the mullet, too. Yeah. Normally, I like Josh Gad. Like, I, I, I think Josh Gad's a great actor. In some parts, I think he went a little too, like, overboard. Yeah. Especially, like, yelling at the soldiers. Like, no. Like, yeah, that's a little too far. Yeah, those soldiers would have eaten him alive. <laughs> yeah. I was just waiting for someone to just knock his ass out. Dude, that would have I, made that scene I, a way I better. I feel that would have been so much funnier. So, more, so much more... Yeah, okay. I'm so you tired. can say funnier. We're not... Okay. <laughs> we're not... Feel. We're not getting fails for grammar. Okay, thank goodness. Um, Overall, the trailer... The trailer was... Solid. Uh... Visually, visually yeah. solid visually, story. It was, very, it was lacking. Yeah, the story was lacking, and I'm just, I'm just not getting a Han Solo vibe from this Alden guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm holding out. I'm, you know, I'm keeping an open mind. We'll see Memorial Day. But... They should have just, they should have just called this Lando. <laughs> no, dude, I would have been on board. Right. Been like, Donald oh, Buck. so like get a little backstory on Lando. Yeah. It's like, oh, we already kind of get Han Solo. I mean, it could have been. They could have just... What's his last name? Calrissian? Yeah, Lando Calrissian. Yeah. They could have just called it Calrissian or Lando or something like that. Giving us the backstory of Lando rather than Han Solo. Yeah. Because it, their stories are so intertwined. They are. It's kind of... They were just... fight Like, they fought together and they did all this stuff together and then Han steals the Millennium Falcon and then... The, see Luke. the one thing I'm hoping that I don't get from this movie is I walk out of the theater, I'm like, there was absolutely no point that this prequel need, needed to be made. That's what I'm... That's the struggle with... It It needs to add to the the original trilogy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Or Force Awakens or whatever. Yeah. I mean, this... 
everyone that I've talked to about this movie, like yeah. my dad and my brothers and a couple of neighbors, they they're all just kind of like, oh, okay, why? Like, why is this being made? And that's fair. And it makes sense because we don't know. <laughs> yeah. But like I mean, Rogue One, I get. It's kind of oh. adds. That adds a whole new level of. Yeah. Like that's like, not oh, shit. That's not a uh, story that I thought I needed, but it was very. That was a great story to add of what happened between episode three and four. Yeah. I thought that was great. I think they could even take it back further if they wanted to. Oh, yeah, they could. With that, just because I'm sure a freaking shit ton of time passed between three and four. Yeah, true. Um, C- Cinema Sins pointed out something pretty good about Rogue One, saying, like, uh, with the Darth Vader scene at the end. Yeah. Him saying, like, okay, now I feel gypped from, for episode four, <laughs> because he didn't do any of this. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, like, more, like, it made me hate the, the original trilogy because I didn't get to see this Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> That, Which makes that sense. scene is like one of the greatest scenes in Star Wars history now. Yeah. Dude, that I was just Oh yeah. <laughs> Like that entire scene, I'm just like, okay, Darth Vader, you got it. In, in the theater I felt like little squirrel little school schoolgirl. Yeah. Thankfully I didn't, you know, act out, but you know, felt it inside. What do you think they could add to the story? the original trilogy with the Han Solo origin. No, I honestly don't know. Um, because I haven't seen the original trilogy in a very long while. Um, I hope we get to see him break that record with the Millennium Falcon. The, uh, was it 14 parsecs? Yeah, yeah, 14. Or was it 12? Because I think oh everyone gosh, says, oh, it. they did 14, and then Han usually corrects someone. Yeah, because he corrected uh, Rey in The Force Awakens. Wasn't it 15? I thought, because she says in 14 parts, it's like 15. No, I thought you said a lower number. Oh. Maybe you said 13. Maybe. I can't remember. This does not count, because you don't No, it, I, I don't. Okay. It's so, I thought it was like a lower number. I don't know how parsecs work. <laughs> I don't either. I mean, maybe 15's faster. <laughs> that's well my pay grade. Yeah, that's like way below my pay grade. Below, above. <laughs> I don't have a pay grade in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, I don't either. Um, let's see, we got Jurassic World. Yeah, which he actually recently just saw like 10 minutes ago. Oh, shit. Right? Dude, what... They created another damn dinosaur. Yeah. I'm going to quote... Those scientists I, needs to be shot. He <laughs> do, isn't it Dr. Wu? Dr. Wu? Yeah. He needs to be shot yeah, on does. site. I'm going to quote what I quoted to Caleb uh, 10 minutes ago in um, Curse of Chucky when Tiffany is filing her nails and she's like, they never learn. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't. I want to say it was Curse of Chucky. Yeah, it wasn't Bride or Seed. Yeah, no, it was called Cur- Curse. Not called Curse of Chucky. Dude, could you imagine being in the mainland and then being what, even discussing bringing dinosaurs, being like, they're going to die again. Let them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because the last three times we've dealt with yeah. them have been worked out so well. Yeah. Like, you, do you not remember how well Jurassic World turned out? Or Jurassic Park? Jurassic Park didn't even get to open. It's like, I'm pretty sure there's a big-ass dinosaur fish eat, ready to eat our sailors and shit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It, I couldn't even imagine having that conversation. I'd be, like, the only sane person in the room. They need to be protected. Uh, the hell they do. <laughs> <laughs> I think they died for a reason. Yeah. They went extinct, so we wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but once it's like you're just challenging God at this. You <laughs> basically <laughs> are. <laughs> Fifth times the charm. <laughs> um, but the biggest positive I could say about this TV spot is it. Um, what's the word? I didn't really like the trailer, the first trailer, that much because I felt like it was just gonna be like a 
rehash of not a rehash, but I don't know. It just felt like they they weren't adding anything new. But in this one, I definitely definitely seemed like they're going to be doing a lot a lot new, and so I was definitely more invested in this TV spot than the first trailer. Yeah. This, I think a uh, a trailer's purpose or TV spots is to make you more excited for the film. And I felt this TV spot did it a lot better than the trailer. Yeah. Agreed. But, so many of these movies could be, or with Jurassic World, Jurassic Park should have been the last <laughs> yeah. movie. The first and last. <laughs> but they're still so cool. They are. They're really cool. Yeah. And just the, like I've said before, the way the park was established in Jurassic World, I loved it so much. Yeah. So great. Yeah, but like Jeff Goldblum says, life finds a way. Yep. <laughs> Just yeah, freaking screw everything up. Yep. Um. But something with this is just getting off topic to Jurassic Park two. How long time. the the Lost World. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Their deal where they were um, doing the... Was that the one with the dude that was like in the parachute and then driving through the fog and just doing a tour of the, the world? I think so. Was it? Remember. Okay. So if that's the one I'm thinking of, how did you freaking forget that that place was overrun by dinosaurs? They're just kind of like, oh yeah, there's a lost world with a... Uh, a bunch of different animals and stuff. It's like, no, they're freaking dinosaurs. You, <laughs> you ignorant bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I've only seen Jurassic Park two and three once each, um, so I can't remember. They're worth a watch over. I, I think I, the last, not the second one, but the third one. Really, is. I like the second one a lot better than third. Maybe it's been a while I'm, since I've seen it. I'm Maybe. to the point I where might, I'm I might share there. that opinion. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm almost to the point where I don't hate the third one, but it's pretty bad. Hmm. I mean, the biggest positive I can say, that there's dinosaurs, and the dinosaurs... There's dinosaurs there. in all of them, and then it's just but let's worst face it, case scenario. Let's face it, that saves the movie, because the dinosaurs look so cool. That's true. I liked how we got a, a um, not really a Jurassic World, but a Jurassic Park throwback with Jeff Goldblum. Yep, that was awesome. With Jeep. It's like, uh, do you want to take a test drive? I just did. <laughs> Speaking of Super Bowl uh, commercials, the Tide ads. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dude, I've, I can't help. Like, did you see my Snapchat today? Oh, yeah, um... I took a picture of a Camaro, and I'm like, yeah. Camaro? Nope. Tide ad. Yeah. And then I got, like, a little uh, picture of a, <laughs> a bottle of Tide and, like, shrunk it down and put it on the car. You can do that in Snapchat? Yeah, you can, like... So I took a picture offline yeah. and then made a sticker out of it. Oh, shit, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, so I, I'll have to show you, because I did this same thing with, um like, Spider-Man faces yeah like with the eyes doing weird stuff sweet so i have one of those i did one with uh with groot and so the tide one i just took a picture of a bottle of tide and that's pretty funny <laughs> and then i shrunk it super small put it on the camaro i was that gave me a pretty good laugh this one i want to get one of uh david harbour just his face or just in a weird position and I want to get uh, make a sticker out of one of those Yeah. and so whenever I, I'm going to start doing tight ads <laughs> should you change your thing season 3 no tight ad <laughs> <laughs> dude I'm so doing that <laughs> uh. you're welcome Yep. <laughs> Dude, that's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, that was great. Anyway. <laughs> I 
get into the peace day resistance yeah infinity war we got Ooh. so much new footage dude yeah and we don't even know if it's real <laughs> with so you i told you with the uh the russo saying that they filmed a bunch of stuff oh yeah that was fake yeah and they release it so it says take the trailers with a grain of salt i thought no i thought they didn't film anything they just wrote like some of the script that was fake well you can't really trust marvel marvel uh, commercials anymore okay but so ever I'm since sorry, thor but that is a very isn't that kind of like stupid that you spend millions of dollars filming these scenes but you're not going to put them in the movie yeah but I mean, yeah, just, I get that just think movie. about the scenes, though. Like, th obviously, the ones with... They all made sense to me. What? Like, the scenes in the TV spot, right? Right. None of them seemed out of place. Is that what you're... The ones from the TV spot didn't, but... Like, it, it's easy to... I have trust issues because of the Thor Ragnarok trailers. Remember when he had the, like, the smashing down and his eyes were glowing... But in the okay, yeah, actual movie, fair. it's he has like an eye patch. And you're just what? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Actually, he doesn't have an eye patch. He just has the missing eye. Well, I mean, at least one eye was glowing. Yeah. Well, duh. <laughs> I'm just. It's saying. the only other eye. It still looked badass. It did. So it's. I think Marvel's just telling us now. It says you just need a grain of salt. It. Okay. Like be excited and get ready to come see the movie but don't expect everything you see to be in the movie yeah okay or to be in the movie exactly how it's shown or yeah. whatever okay. like I I see the the running scene with the Avengers I don't see that being in slow-mo yeah probably not still an awesome shot it was an amazing shot, yeah. but I don't see that being in slow mo. Yeah, I could see that. Because that just wouldn't make sense unless Thanos and his people are charging, too. But yeah. then that's like a super far distance to. Um. But. Yeah, so I I I kind of. Just take everything a little lightly. Okay. With it when it comes to that's fair trailers now. So amazing to me, It was. So many goodies. So we saw a clip of, or a really quick shot of Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Doctor Strange yeah. standing together, which is awesome. Someone made a meme that said at a year two and a half men, and then it shows the three, you know, the three guys from two and a half men, my two and a half men. It's <laughs> pretty funny. It fits. Yeah. Um, then you see uh, Scarlet Witch doing something with Vision's Mind Stone. Yep. And he's in his Paul Bettany form. Yeah. And then a couple scenes later, you actually see the Vision without Mind Stone. Was that when he was walking through the hall? Yep. So I th I could still I thought I could still see it. I don't think it. No, I swear it wasn't there. Okay. Ooh. But the, it did look, though, like Vision got jacked up hard. Oh, yeah. And like, was, you see him, like, walking, holding his stomach. Yeah. And then it's been speculated, like, oh, who was walking behind uh, Captain America in that scene? Uh, yeah, we're, I think it's, well, it's not been confirmed, but we're all, like, pretty sure it's Scarlet Witch. Yeah, I mean, who else would uh, it Yeah, be? I'd be surprised if it was anybody else. Yeah, I don't see it. Like, I saw that, too, it being... Like Nick Fury, I don't see that. Like no, because is he's not confirmed for this movie, is he? I know uh, he's no, he's only for four. Yeah, he's only confirmed for Captain Marvel. I thought he was confirmed for four. Maybe he is. I can't remember. Come on, you two, go HD so I can. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can find it online. Maybe. Um. You just you just keep talking. You see Iron Man uh, with his nanite armor? Yes, that was so cool. I feel like he's copying Black Panther a little bit. I don't give a shit, it's so cool. It is cool, but I know his nanite armor comes like out of his skin. Yeah. So it's, 
if it comes out of his skin, then that's just eh. Just eh. Yeah. I I kind of wish though that the way that it was like like eating or kind of like connecting together. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that his sunglasses would just kind of like get absorbed into his hand. That would have been really cool. Right. <laughs> um. I have mixed feelings about it because I know Black Panther's sister is supposed to be the smartest person in the world. Yeah. Next, follow like super close behind Tony Stark. And then I actually don't know where Reed Richards stands in that line. I'm pretty sure he's in front of Iron Man, but just because I'm unsure, I'm going to say Reed Richards is in number three. That's not but I f- feel that Black Panther's sister should always kind of be one step ahead of Iron Man. Just because their technology is way more advanced as a society than Iron Man. Yeah. Like, he's the one that's basically building up the civilization making it more advanced. He's the one doing all that. It, Black Panther's sister, though, she's all, she's working with a civilization that's already so much more highly advanced than any other outside country. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she should always be kind of like one step above Iron Man. Like, Iron Man should be jealous of her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <you> what? <laughs> like, I... How come I didn't think of that? <laughs> yeah, dude, I can't find, like, a very clear picture, but it really seems that there's no Infinity Stone. Oh, well, maybe it's... It seems like that, that wouldn't be that expensive to make. Yeah, that's true. I mean, other than the actor's time. <laughs> yeah. True, true. Yeah. Um, you see Spider-Man on that giant ring... Oh, yeah. Getting, like, in his... Regular Spider-Man. So, well, well, not as regular. Yeah. His, uh... First edition. His Spider-Man Homecoming outfit. Yeah. Or Civil War. I don't know. So is his... Do you consider his his Homecoming suit his homemade? Or do you consider his Homecoming suit the one that he wore in Civil War? I'd say the one in... Homecoming is homemade, right? Like we're talking Home, about the, like suit wise. So we're talking about like his home, uh, his homemade suit. Yeah, is that his Spider-Man Homecoming suit, or is that his homemade suit to you? I'd say his homemade. I'm still so confused by your question. Okay, so that scene that we see in Civil War when Iron Man's like, Shh. whoa. Yep. Um, when so uh, when Iron Man showing Peter Parker the YouTube video of him swinging around. Yeah. That that costume that he's in. Are you talking about that being the homemade costume? Yeah. Obviously, that's his homemade suit. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But when I refer to his Spider-Man Homecoming suit. Yeah. I'm you typically talking about his uh, homemade suit, like nine times out of ten. I'm talking about the homemade suit. And then when I'm talking about his high-tech suit, Civil I'm u- I usually refer to it as the Civil War suit. Okay. okay. Even now though they're the exact same, but... Yeah, now I get you. Okay, now I get it. Okay. Yeah. I can agree with you on that. And then the one that he he's wearing in Infinity War, I'm just going to start refer to as his Iron Spider suit. Yeah. I think that's even what they... At least from what I've saw, seen, that's what the Funko Pop is called, just Iron Spider. Yeah. Speaking of ways, there's going to be a box lunch exclusive with an unmasked. Oh, shit. Yeah. I might buy that one. Yeah, me too. We might have to <sighs> run it out of space. <laughs> How do you think I, I just feel? set this up. <laughs> How do you think I feel? I'm completely out of space. Um, I could probably shift these guys over and put them over there. Then I have one Spider-Man per shelf. <laughs> Don't you dare sideline Hawkeye. Well, where would you put Hawkeye? I'd put 
put the pipe put in front and center right next to Cap and Iron Man. <laughs> well, he's right next to Winter Soldier. Isn't that close enough? No. He's on the end. I'm just giving you shit. Yeah. Mm. I know, but still. <laughs> okay. Who else do I need? I think I only need Black Widow. Yeah. You need to get Black Widow. I'd get the... Either wait for... Well, do you want her in her Infinity War disguise, or do you want just Black Widow? To disguise? Yeah. Well, you know, on her, like, blonde hair. and I kind of want the red-headed one. I'd go try to find... Check, like, Amazon and eBay. Try to get the uh, Civil War Black Widow, because that's one that I have. I think that's the best-looking one. Hmm. I'll have to look through them. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, if that one comes out, we're freaking hitting box lunch, like, every day. <laughs> yeah. I just hope there's not a lot of freaking scalpers. That'd be bullshit. Gosh, I hate scalpers so much. We need to find out when they get their shipments. Oh, I got you covered. Funko Pop Hunters. They tell you when the shipments are? Well, they don't know when the shipments are, but they'll, like, usually, like, say, like, oh, you know, Iron Spire is going live on Box Lunch's website at midnight tonight. And then they'll be like, oh, it's live right now. And, yeah. They're really good at that kind of shit. Uh, well, I meant, like, are, do you well, think we'll, you were going to be able to find it in store? We probably will. Uh, I got it, because I know they announced the street date, so I'll have to look at that, and we'll just have to go, like, basically every single day. I want... I want to go to Box Lunch and ask one of the people when they get their shipments mm -hmm. of pop figures... Because you know that they have to get constant shipments. Yeah. That they probably have a day, so I want to ask them when theirs is. Okay. And then we just freaking hit up that store when we know that that... Like, I'll freaking get off early from work if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. That will... I think that's a plan we can try and do. Yeah. So Either... Probably next weekend. Yeah. Just go ask them when their shipment is and then just freaking raid the store. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that the Iron Spider suit is just like an in case of emergency suit. Yeah, I can agree with that. I, like, I know that Marvel has a thing about changing the suits every freaking movie. <laughs> yes, they do. Like, especially with Captain America and Iron Man. The only Man consistent... And Hawkeye, actually. Yeah, and Hawkeye. Like, all of them. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much you can do with Hulk. Yeah, that's true. And there's only so much that you can do with Black Widow. Yeah. It's basically the same thing with the, with those two. But with Captain America, we got his World War Two outfit in the first one. And then in the Avengers, he wore, like, the Star Spangled Banner one. And then Winter Soldier, we get the tactical one. And then he goes back to wearing his World War Two. And then in Age of Ultron, we get the... So, yeah, that's what it looks like. Oh, that's pretty bitchin', dude. Yeah, no. so its street date is March 3rd. I need to see if there's a box lunch in St. George, because I'm going to be in... Oh, shit, you'll be at Drill? No. Ah, oh, shit, March 3rd? Oh. I will be at Drill. Ah, oh, shit. Gosh damn it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that well, a bitch. it is a bitch. Okay, and then... So I'm hoping that's an in case of emergencies and not they're going to switch every... That suit is just perfect. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, I can see them going from doing a black suit. That'd be so cool. Yeah, like, that suit looks like it could be taken over by Symbio and be perfect for, like, the black suit Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that happens. But... I'm hoping that they don't do the same thing that they've been doing with all the other Avengers. 
I can as cool as it is to see like Captain America and Iron Man in different suits each movie yeah Spider-Man needs to be consistent because yeah. he doesn't change his suits yeah I would agree I mean other than <laughs> red to black yeah <laughs> I mean, he is only a teenager, so he kind of has to do with what he has. And I see him updating his suit when he's, like, older. Yeah. When he's, like, more uh, proficient at being Spider-Man. Because, uh, like, so you know the Spider-Man PS4 game? Yeah. So that suit that he's wearing with the big-ass white spider? Mm -hmm. That suit is supposed to be him being having been Spider-Man for years. Oh. So he, it's like he just upgrades his suit as he gets older and more proficient and what he needs. Cool. Which, I really wish that he would have made his own suit. So he's like, yeah. okay, this would be this would help me in combat, and then he makes it himself instead of Iron Man basically covering his 500 and... 64 different web combinations. Yeah. I mean, holy shit. <laughs> so, I want to know how the, he d does the different webs. Like, is that like 564 between the two wrists? <laughs> or is there like a different combination? Like, it's one finger on, like, yeah. right finger on one, left finger on the, the other, then right finger on the right, and then left finger on the left. Like, is it that how it works? <laughs> It's like you're playing bop it with the... <laughs> yeah, you're like, uh... <laughs> like, I would have much preferred him to... I would have been okay with Iron Man making the suit. Yeah. I would have... I didn't care for him updating the web shooters, though. That's fair. Like, I think the web shooters needed to be strictly Spider-Man's deal. Yeah, I, I can agree. I mean, like, the web fluid is. I mean, True. He's like, you aren't... Like, how do you... How do you make a... Uh, a suit for someone whose superpowers you don't have? True, true. Like, Iron Man was just kind of like, okay, well, taser webs would work. Insta-kill, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Stark's just that good, man. Yeah, but, like, I understand the drone. That was so cool. Yeah, that's cool. But why upgrade his web shooters... You don't even have his superpowers. You don't know what's helpful to him. True. Yeah, that's a good point. Unless they had, like, a big old consulting thing where he's just like, <laughs> tell me what you want. Like a freaking interior designer. <laughs> what are, Tell me what you're looking for. <laughs> that's kind of, like, the way I feel about Black Panther making uh, Captain America's new shield. It's like... It's kind of like, okay, small. give him what we have. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little small. It's like, you understand I need a shield, right? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's a Wakandan shield. <laughs> you Wakandans <laughs> must not get shot at a lot. <laughs> uh. <laughs> anyway, final thoughts on the trailer? Great. So great. Um... That final shot of Thanos. Oh. Dude, that's probably the best shot of him we've got. Dude, that's the CGI looks beautiful on him. Ooh. Take notes, DC. Damn right. Take notes. Um I'm trying to think of any other trailers that I know are coming out soon. Deadpool is supposed to come out on uh Valentine's Day. Hey, perfect. I hope it's just as inappropriate as the, right. the movie was. I hope, just because I know Deadpool knows that he's in the movie. Yeah. But the reference, or like whenever I watch it, you know when he stabs the guy and he's holding the button, he's like, oh, my boyfriend told me I was, he was taking me to a super, or to a, to a superhero movie, but that dude just turned the <laughs> other dude into an effing kebab. <laughs> And it was like, he makes a reference to Valentine's Day and whatnot in that. Yeah. So I hope they don't make a reference where it kind of, like, gets outdated. 
Yeah, with, with multiple watches because I could watch Deadpool all day, every oh, day. Me too. It's but it's like that part just takes me out of it. It's like it's not Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> anymore, but it's still funny though. Yeah, it's still hilarious, and I'm hoping the trailer is. Yeah. Um, I know the trailer is going to be fantastic. Well, yeah. No, because whoever's in charge of marketing for Deadpool is a freaking genius. Would I say we probably won't get like another a second trailer for Infinity War until probably like the end of March? So I'd say. I'm probably gonna say like early April. I don't know. I don't think. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna put it off that long? I don't know. Early, I'd say late March, early April. I say we, I think we. End of March, yeah. I say we get another mix. Yeah. Like, it's, you know how they do it. But they just show the same thing over again, just different order. Yeah. I'm, I guess, I bet we get some of that at the end of March. I just want at least one glimpse of Hawkeye and Ant-Man, because Ant-Man's also getting the shaft. <laughs> he's not in this one very much, is he? No, he's not, because of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Makes sense. I don't think so. I'm super interested in. I can't. I can't fathom how. Infinity War and Ant Man and the Wasp are gonna mix yeah, right now. Like I, I agree. Like, do they just get like sucked into spit? Like, I hope if they leave us on a freaking cliffhanger, I'm going to freaking explode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, if they do some bullshit where Thanos is like, fine, let's go, and then, like, opens a portal, and then all the Avengers disappear, and it's just a pff, end, and I'm like, I will literally <laughs> throw my popcorn <laughs> at the freaking screen. Damn it, Kevin Feige! <laughs> this is horse shit! <laughs> <laughs> I will just, dude, I will snap. <laughs> the funniest thing is I can totally see you doing it. <laughs> Oh, it'd be the best thing ever. I'm really hoping it happens. Dude, and with my luck, if they that. if they did do that, <laughs> with my luck, they wouldn't have an end credit scene just to be like, just yeah. to piss you off more, yeah. Dude, I would just, I would go freaking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that pretty much covers it for the the trailers. You got anything? Nope. To add? Not that I can think of. All right. Then let's get into Dreamcast. Main event time. Yes, it is. And this is our idea for the All Bros, the Purge movie. Yeah. I don't a know. Movie if you that's have... probably never going to be made, but you never know. Hey, we made a Purge short film before. That's okay. true. Yeah. We could do it. That's the nice thing. The Purge is not that like you don't need a big budget. That is true. Pretty easy. Um, I think the most money you're gonna spend is in glass getting broken. <laughs> That's true. Very true. But that would be a bad, like little although short film. Yeah, it wouldn't. Although it's it'd be kind of hard to do because in the movies it's implied that like after like seven p.m. there's like the streets are like completely dead, and there's no way that the, we'd have to film that. Like, we'd have to like film it in the middle of the night. At like one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning, when the streets are actually dead. Yeah, but even then, you still get like night shift people driving around. That's true. I'm trying to think of areas that are like dead. Oh, like construction areas you could do. Yeah, but that's true. Like areas like new communities, which true. since I drive dumpsters now, I know where all the places yeah, are. Yeah. Okay. It's coming together well. Yes, it is. <laughs> Ooh, this might actually happen. Yeah. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs> um, okay, so for my Dreamcast of the Purge, I didn't really like. I don't really exactly have a story put together, but these are just like some notes that I would point out. In okay. Movie, if that's if that, if that works. Well, um, it's your your deal, Rose. Okay. All right. Um. So, I have like the opening set. I want the film to open with uh, news clippings of. The purge first being instituted, like I want, like the news clip, uh, you know, just like the president signing it, and just all that kind of shit. Like, like a bill being signed. Yeah, like or a law being signed that the purge has officially been 
legalized. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, also news uh, clippings of the uh, previous year's purge because I want my purge movie to take place on the second year of the purge. Why the second? Because I want the biggest reason I want is like the government to be like, okay, let's see. So this didn't work during the first purge. This did. Maybe we need to crack down more on what uh, they can't do. And, you know, shit like that. Ah, uh, like the weapon ban? Yeah. Ooh. See? Okay. They better explore that in the first purge. Like, so <laughs> well, <it's> like... <laughs> Some dude with a freaking rocket launcher. <laughs> They're like, okay, this is illegal now. <laughs> oh, like, could you imagine being it's the... like, sir, what do we do? Well, I had no idea someone was going to think of bring a freaking tank out. <laughs> Could you imagine being the official that approves that? Yeah. And then seeing someone rolling in a tank and you're just like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay. So you're going to focus more on what they can't do. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then, so, like I said, I want it to be the second annual purge. Um, I want to focus on more than just murder, including robbing and stealing. So the same thing. Okay. Um, so with bigger stores, I don't see them having any money but like small local stores I see them yeah so okay I don't know if I included that um yeah like I think that's one thing that I thought about how like big businesses might have not known what to do during the first purge like they didn't have that high of security like probably what they have now that would be funny uh store owner yeah. During the announcement, just hearing all crime is legal, yeah. and just being like, the shit that just said? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I think it was me and a couple of my coworkers, we were, we were just saying, dude, if the purge was real, our boss loves this store so much, he'll be up on the rooftop just sniping people that keep <laughs> trying to break in here. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it, it probably actually really happened. He loves that store. Okay, so... Store owners trying to get more prepared. Yeah, so like, and maybe like focus on like what uh, people would do about that because I kind of like in the purge story how like uh, they didn't the guy didn't have that much security, so it wasn't really that big. Um, so maybe like as years go on, I don't know if like bigger stores get more advanced with security. So it'd be interesting to see how they're doing with the year two if it's improved, if people can still break in. You know. So, just idea. more of a <laughs> going but quoting Jurassic Park again. Life finds a way. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, no, seriously, dude. Could you imagine pit, like putting down a shit ton of money for like super top of the line security, and then someone breaking it or breaking in, and you're just like, shit. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> well, there's always next year. Um, go over or explain. Go into depth of like the little consequences that they don't emphasize um, during the announcement. Like what? Um, yeah, see, that's what I'm trying to think. Uh, okay, like this kind consequences of, of smaller stuff. Yeah, so this kind of leads into the next point. Uh, how do they know if you purge five minutes before or five minutes after the siren? Is it, mm. Are there cameras watching basically the whole country? I could see that. Them using at least... Um, maybe they beef up cameras yeah. on traffic lights and buildings and such. Because I'm sure there's a lot of stuff, uh, at least hopefully, during that of the first purge. They're like, dude, the purge ended ten minutes ago. Do you see anybody watching me? I don't give a shit. Mm. I, I think I just that's like something I really want to know uh let's see I wonder if they're with at the with the with the, that purge movie like the first one yeah I don't know if that's going to be based on the day of the purge that's true I because you can't is. just like throw people in that you need to prepare that that's true yeah being like hey we just signed this bill where all crime is going to be legal 
for this one day and because it makes you wonder like how long it's taken for America to like realize get behind it <laughs> yeah like oh shit this really is sticking around because um oh my gosh I can't remember like what and what purge it is in the second and third one they're not up to the 20s are they I don't think they are no in the first one yeah I have no idea I can't remember I'll I haven't watched that one in a while yeah I haven't either because that's my least favorite one um go into detail of how the purge first went or how the first purge went and how the government changed some things and kept some things so kind of like what I emphasized earlier wait you didn't like the purge no I liked or the purge but no don't get me wrong I think the purge is really good but uh like it didn't really feel like the purge it was really just like a home invasion movie Whereas the second and third one actually do feel like the purge. I was gonna say yeah, that was the movie that took your purginity. Puns. <laughs> 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 wow. That was awful. Um, it, it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's also uh, that was actually also the first R-rated movie I ever saw in the theater, or the first yeah. So and I was the only one in the theater. That sucks so much. In Utah, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, that's true. Um. That's a great thing about seeing rated R movies. Everyone's just, they're like, oh, we're not going to go see that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, big, really big question. Why did they choose 12 hours only, and why did they choose only one night a year? Mm -hmm. I really hope they explain that in the first purge. Just a, just a stupid ass name. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to let that go. Dude, you're bitter. I know I, uh... So how would you explain that? why they only do one well because I'm wondering if like in the first purge they're like oh well okay so for this day for 24 hours you get to you know all crime is legal but then they're like well, oh shit maybe that's way too much time you're killing off way too much of the population yeah <laughs> dude I want to see the day after dude I want to I would want to just see like how the cleanup crew goes like oh my god yeah is it like snow blowers or snow, <laughs> like <laughs> snow plows in the end of the purge anarchy you hear like the uh personnel of the radio saying like the uh la freeway is just like scattered with dead people along the sideways and you're like damn i'd hate to be on cleanup crew you best be paying me like a million dollars a year for this shit because you imagine getting the people that were like thrown off buildings it's like ah oh. you just gotta scrape it on the other side <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh because that was that <laughs> That was pretty funny. Dude, you could totally turn to do a purge movie as a comedy. <laughs> yeah, you could. They tried. Like the but day it didn't after. Fail. Okay, yeah, do that. I'd love to see a purge movie, the purge comedy, the day after. Because they did like that stupid, the Meet the Blacks comedy. That was a parody of the first one. It was so retarded. I didn't laugh once. It was really stupid. But dude, I was, was that was a, yeah. that used to be on my watch list. Now it's uh, not. Yeah, I don't watch it. It's bad. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so down to watch that. <laughs> Just the guy. It's, a, it's like the six <laughs> annual. Teaching the newbie. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! I want this movie now, please. <laughs> dude, that would be an awesome oh, movie. <laughs> that would be the best. Uh, uh, let's see. Um. I want to see um, maybe like college students purging. Um, like, do they want to steal? Do they want to murder? I'm assuming they probably more lead towards stealing, because you know college students are broke af. That's and, true. Yeah. And then um, is everyone on board here too, or does it take them longer? That's a good question. Yeah. I don't I think everyone's going to be on board here too. There's no way. That's a interesting thing because eventually I know eventually with election year you get to the lady who's against the purge and yeah. she's like hated. Yeah. So, at what point does that become the like the shitty thing to be rooting for? Yeah. Like at one point purge? does murder become America's new religion? As said in the purge election year. I was like, dude, did you just make that up? No. <laughs> I was like, we need to trademark that tonight. <laughs> I wish. Huh. So, if so, let's say that they do the twenty-four hour purge, like with the first one, 
and they don't put a weapon ban. Oh my gosh, and I, I want to see that. Yeah, right. Just see how oh, how south it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, okay, cleanup was a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> like, wasn't that mini gun in uh, the second one in Anarchy? The what? That mini gun in the back of the frame. yeah yeah that was an anarchy that was that was legal yeah apparently. Holy shit <laughs> <laughs> I could okay yeah so it's like well I know who I'm was siding on on purge night Big Daddy stupid man who calls yourself Big Daddy <laughs> freaking tools and I'm so some of the like don't, I really love the purge movies I love them but like some of the acting like really sucks because <laughs> in the second one. Where they're like, ah, oh, these are the two people that, you know, big guy's been looking for. Big Daddy, we are two for your personal purge <laughs> on this. <laughs> Who the hell would say that? <laughs> Dude, if I, could you imagine getting hired for that? And then they're like, all right, this is my code name. And it's like, you need to pick a new code name. Because <laughs> you can go to hell. <laughs> you know what would have been a great line for the two to say? Peekaboo, and then just start dragging them away. Better than Big Daddy, we have two for your personal purge. So, sorry. I'd like to know how a personal purge got set up. Yeah, all right. Okay, so with the second one, it would have more bands. You yeah. can see it having more bands. I think so. Do you think? I feel. I'm assuming probably as the years went on. They went like, okay, we got to get rid of that. We got to get rid of that. Okay, yeah, no, that can't happen anymore. So I'm the way I see a purge starting is that crime is just ridiculous. Yeah, like the crime rates would just be ridiculous. Yeah, and unemployment is really bad too. Because that's what that they say. Be, yeah. Yeah, crime is at all time low. Unemployment barely exists, all thanks to the purge. Yeah. It's like, hmm. gee, I wonder why. Maybe that's because you're killing all the poor people? Makes sense. Hmm. It's like messed up that like, so James what happens Wong did that in the Purge movies. That like basically the Purge was designed just so that the government doesn't have to pay for welfare or anything anymore. Yeah, that'd be jacked that was, up. I think like, that's such what? a cool <laughs> message that he hit in there. That was bitching. I would like to see a homeless person like kill an entire family and then just like find the deeds to the house and everything <laughs> and just be like this is my house now <laughs> that guy should have done it in the first purge movie. I know right he had a chance <laughs> just kill everyone dude just lose your soul for a night <laughs> um hmm I'm trying to think of other stuff I'd want like what there's there needs to be a story, obviously. Yeah, so, I'm just trying to think of one. That's that's where I struggle with it. I really only so think what about points? What perspective? Or yeah, what perspective would you want to see it from? Would you want to see it from like a middle class, rich or poor? I feel so. We've seen it from the upper. We've seen it from the rich class in the first one. We I feel we've already seen it from the. Uh, I think they're more upper middle. Yeah, than that's they were. True. Well, and I don't really know if I really want to see like a rich people perspective because it seems in the purge world if you're rich, you basically just pay someone to be a martyr and have them come to your house and you kill them there so you don't have to go out and take the chance of getting killed yourself. And I just don't feel that makes for a good purge movie because I feel to be a good purge movie, you have to be outside. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Hmm. I'm trying to think of something that we've never seen before. Uh, like the purge for with child's eyes? I don't know the word. That might be a little no, too dark. That, yeah, that's... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little too What dark. about like a... Um, like if you did it, like you were shooting... A movie from like the Discovery Channel. Interesting. So it's like showing you like kind of like a found footage thing. Yeah. Showing found footage of the stuff that people were were doing. 
Oh, that'd be kind of cool. And then just like having a whole history and then doing like interviews with congressmen and and stuff and like people from different communities. So it'd be kind of like a purge documentary. Yeah. Okay. I'd just be down for that. That'd be cool. Right? Yeah. And then it like answers all your questions. Yeah. But you'd have, you'd like, with that, you'd have to get a group of people that have seen the purge. And then you just need to get them to hound you with questions. And yeah. You, and somehow answer all of them. I just need to set up an interview with James DeMonico. Be like, okay, what's this? What's this? What's this? I feel he's just going to be like, oh shit, I never thought of that. <laughs> Ooh, dude. So what if it was exactly like that? Like a History Channel documentary. And it's going through it. And then when the movie ends... Mm-hmm. the alarm goes off and it just shows it's just like at the end it just says happy purging and then the alarm is like Rrr. yeah be, okay right yeah, like I it's like a movie it. it's like a pre-movie yes <laughs> it's like oh shit <laughs> the purge is starting right dude, now dude I'd be like totally down for just a purge movie that yeah just focuses on leading up to the purge because I just think it's really interesting like that's some of my like that's pr- one of my favorite parts of the purge anarchy is just like it leading up to it because you just hear like uh, like on the radio how they're saying like uh, you know the people in the government wanted the purge you know it saved the country and you know you're just hearing all this shit like on the radio on the TV and then you just have like people like they're like getting ready for the purge and they're like really antsy like the group of people that uh, are basically like just showing themselves off to Zane and I think it's Zach and Elise I think the couple in the purge anarchy uh, when, like, the guy, like, slams on the guy's hood and, like, scares the shit out of him. And then he skates away and you see his whole crew. I love that scene. That scene's so badass. Um, but, yeah, I'd love to see just, like, the, a movie just focusing on, like, maybe just, like, ten hours before the purge or something like that. So, like, focusing on ten hours before it. So, not, like, the, the documentary thing. Well, no, the so like I was that's what I was saying like do the documentary and yeah. then have it like look like it's ended and then it just says like at the end of the the movie it just says happy purging and then it does the alarm and then through the through the credits it's just doing the the dialogue yeah okay no dude no. that's something we could actually do that's true we, we just need to get like all we'd have to do is get a bunch of freaking footage from like crimes happening in the streets yeah that's true which wouldn't be hard to do. No. <laughs> it's true. I still find it funny in the first purge that it, with the purge feed at the beginning, they actually show Salt Lake City. Or no, it, it was, was Provo. Provo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's true. I can totally see that happening in Provo. <laughs> Holy shit, we're in Provo right now. Yep. Well, we're screwed. <laughs> Dude, that's why I remember watching the, <laughs> the purge when we were about to move here, and I'm just like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, dude, you're in the safe area of Provo, so yeah, you're good. Happy Valley. Yeah, you're you're in BYU territory. You're good. Yeah, dude, I think BYU campus would be like the safest place. You just get like all the badass church leaders just yeah. guarding all the entrances to BYU. Mm-hmm. Dude, let's face it, all the all the uh, college students would want a per tonight is just free tuition. <laughs> That's all they would want. Well, how would you get free tuition? Like, I would steal hold food the, and... Hold like, the dean at will? Like, gun, at a gunpoint? I don't know. No, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well, that cool. doesn't work, in t- like, once the 12-hour mark passes. <laughs> well, then, try again next year. <laughs> um, Dude, that's something we could actually do. Dude, I'd so be down for that. Let's right? Do we yeah. just need to get, like, a group of people. Yeah. Like, we just need to get a couple old middle-aged men to just interview, like, their congressmen. And then we just get random people off the streets to just yeah. pretend like they're... Just, like, read this. <laughs> Dude, I'd so be down for that. Dude, should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. Hell yeah. That's going to be a fun project. Yeah, we can make that like half hour long. Yeah. Half hour to an hour. 
Yeah, we got a lot of things that we need to work on this summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm just getting like pumped for this. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Dude, that's gonna be fun. And then so with that, we just need to get all the possible questions mm-hmm. and figure out how to logically answer them. Yeah. Like like all the ones that they brought up in college humor. So if you steal a car, do you have to get it registered? Yeah. Oh shit, that's a good point. Yeah, so how would that how would that how would you handle that with stealing a car? Um I don't know. You don't know. No, I don't. But you have the answer for everything. Yeah. I don't know. Go to the person that runs to the Provo DMV to his house that night. Be like, yo, sign my registration so I can actually keep this car. But with that, you'd have to... I don't... So, for, so logically, if you think about it, if you steal a car, you have to have the title. Yes. To the car. Yes. That's true. So shit. what? So what if they did something like this? If you steal a car, obviously driving it when it's not registered, illegal. Yeah. Or you're gonna get pulled over and you're gonna get fined. Yeah. Um. So if I, what if they had. A, a period of time like 10 to 15 days at the DMV just for cars where you go and they like pull up the title and then they write you a new one okay yeah that'd be that would, that would, that'd be really funny <laughs> the DMV has to is that like for, ridiculous or no it's not but I, I don't think it should be like a 10 day thing it should be like a one day thing like it's a it's a make it or break it kind of thing, and if you don't get it within the one day, well, then your ass is getting fined. Because you're the one that decided to steal it, you should only have one day. You only had one night to steal it, you should only have one day to get it registered, or get the registration. But getting that, like, I know with me, it takes a bit of time. That's true. Like, getting it switched over to mine, so maybe not like ten days, but like a week. Okay, Maybe. yeah. Okay, that's And then, nice. obviously, the DMV is just going to be freaking packed. Yeah, oh my gosh. So, it's just going so like, to... I'm just here to months. get this renewed. <laughs> so, it's like, oh, so you're one of the only people that didn't steal a car last night. Yes. Well, sucks to be you. Hmm. Or what if it was, like, an online thing? Yeah, see, that would be even better. So, you just, like, go online, and then you felt, like, get the VIN number and everything, and... Like that stuff you can find easy, and the then you just for say. Reason for registering this car stole at Persian night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous, but it it makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. So, what was one of the other questions that they asked in that college humor? Um, I can't remember any right now. I'll have to watch it again. Okay, so what other questions, or what other things? have been flaws in the Purge movies where it's like well what if this happened or what if this huh. I'm gonna google that shit <laughs> so you just start talking um, dude, so I'm is gonna... that is that registration idea doing it online ridiculous no I don't think so like you get the VIN number and then they like can send you a new title no I think that's a good idea um I just can't think of anything else that's wrong with Purge. I mean, I'm sure there's stuff I'm missing. There's gotta be. Um, uh, oh, sweet. There's a page nine big questions left unanswered. <laughs> oh, hey. Perfect. Okay. Let's see what we got. Uh, so what prompted the idea of the Purge? Um, I'm assuming it's just... Well, I want to know, how did we get... <clears throat> this, okay, here's a question that uh, someone brought up with election year. I think it was CinemaSins. He's like, okay, so 
our government now is based off uh, so many people of being the new founding fathers, and you know they granted uh, it's not called a purge, but yet we still have an electoral college, and there's still two people running to be president. You you think that that would change it a little bit? Because basically, who if like uh, either or side whoever's voting against the purge, if they can basically say, oh no, screw it, that's not allowed anymore. You think that they would have noticed that year one, been like, "Oh shit, yeah, let's screw the electoral college and not do that anymore." <clears throat> Explain that to me again. Okay, so the new founding with fathers, the voting stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so we have the new founding fathers, but we still have an electoral college to where two candidates are running, and whoever wins becomes the president. Um, but yet yeah, whoever is choosing to that if whoever wants to end the purge can end it you think that that's something that the new founding father would have thought of like year one or like when the purge was really being talked about before it was actually so if someone in power has the power to stop the purge yeah I think that would have to be a obviously the president has the power to do certain things. Yeah. But Congress is the one that votes on changing the laws. That's So true. maybe th- with that, Congress has to be have a unanimous decision to end the purge. So that makes you wonder then, did the purge actually end at the end of the election? Because Senator Rowan won, and you hear that... Um, uh, fans or uh, people, or fans of whatever of the new founding fathers are doing protests in the streets because that it's inevitable that the purge will end. I think that's like the politics of that. That's something that I don't think was well thought through with uh, election year. Yeah, that's fair. Um. Because I think there, because I know in our system, to change a law or get rid of a law, it has to go through certain channels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know, it's like, those are all federal laws. Mm-hmm. So I know that there's a state, this is going to be super freaking messed up, but in Utah, <laughs> sodomy mm-hmm. is illegal. I did not know that. Yeah. And so, police officers, it's like kind of an unenforceable one because what you do behind closed doors is your business. Yeah. Um, so, it's it's an unenforceable law, but to get rid of the law, like, you can technically still be arrested for it mm-hmm. if someone accuses you of it. Or if someone can provide evidence that you've done that. So, to get rid of that law saying that you it has to go through certain channels and someone would have to get elected into the state government um, I think like governor or someone but they'd have to take the stance saying like they're pro sodomy and there's no (laughs) there's no one on the planet earth that's going to go on record and say that they're pro sodomy (laughs) Yeah, no. It's it's just kind of a thing that <laughs> no. they they can enforce it, they just choose not to. It's kind of an unenforceable law. Hmm. Which it's Interesting. it's weird. Yeah, that's very weird. So it's so I think the with the purge it'd be like that. Okay. It's some it has to go through the channels. Like obviously if so if we still had the electoral college, president wins or gets sworn in and everything. I think with something as big as the purge being, if it were a federal thing Mm -hmm. or a nationwide thing, which we all assume it is, yeah, the entirety of the, I think the president could say that they're against the purge, and then sign stuff to, like to have the Congress vote, Mm -hmm. and then Congress would just have to vote. But I think that with that, it'd have to be a unanimous decision to get rid of it. Yeah, that's true. Which, if the purge was a real thing and it's been going on for years, I don't think it would ever 
get be get ri- got rid of. No, because if it's helping the economy flourish, and yeah, there's no way the government's gonna be like, ah, oh, you know, and nah. Yeah. I have a number two. Um. Okay, so what about? Okay, what 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 about the enforcing the the weapon law? Oh, like, how is that, and how do they know if you're yeah. used? Um, they actually, I don't know how, but in uh, the Purge Anarchy, when, uh, I can't remember what they use, um, they use, like, some type of weapon that is above Class 4, and you just hear an announcement that says, weapons above Class 4 are strictly prohibited on Purge Night. You will be prosecuted. Do, do you remember that? Oh, so it's, like, kind of a tracking system? Yeah. So they, Okay. Yeah. So that's how they explained it. I was like, holy shit, they're really watching our every move. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to look through this list again. Can you think of any other any other things? No, I can't think of anything. That definitely would have been one of my questions. Like, how do they know if I'm using a weapon above class 4, but they explained that on the Purge Anarchy. Which, by the way, is my still my favorite Purge movie. I love that one. Hmm. Do you have a favorite? <sighs> favorite Purge? Yeah, out of the three. Probably <coughs> Anarchy. Yeah. That one was. That one was the, the best. Yeah. The way they they handled the Purge was excellent. I, mean, I can't find any other questions. So, okay. you know the laws. You are you know the rules of the perch. So Just no like the back of my hand. Right. Not really. Maybe. So well Basically, more or less. Yeah. So what if a so, so if someone uses a weapon above a class four, mm-hmm. um, which could be classified as pretty much anything. They just need to put it in the class four section, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So any other weapon is legal to use. Um, they enforce it with cameras and stuff, mm-hmm. and then they can just kind of figure out who was the accuser. Yeah. Or not the accuser, the accused. Yeah. Um, we figured out car registration. Um, question of mine. Hmm? Burning question of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Makes it easy if ever if like they kept the title or like I think with that the the titles would have to be kept on record. Yeah. With the government, and then you, like obviously you just check the I purged this vehicle. Yeah. Um. And then get it registered under your name. That'd be super shitty if it was like a neighbor that stole your car. Yeah. Right. And you're just like you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like I'd be super bitter. I know, right? But I could also see, like, a friggin' car going back and forth between neighbors. Um, let's see. Like, I think the same would be said with houses. I think houses should have a different set of rules, though. It shouldn't be you just kill everyone in that house and... You it's call, yours. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think it should be... Like, how would you handle that? Should it be you just go in, kill everyone, and then claim the house as your own? Yeah, but you also have to answer, okay, so if you go in the house and kill everybody, does the mortgage fall on you, or because it's the purge, is that wiped? I think that's... That should actually be a a thing. Like, so, like, with the cars, you should be able to fill out the address of a house, and then claim that you've purged the house uh-huh. and then you uh, this is going to be really dark you have to prove that all residents of that house are dead <laughs> like uh, pictures and shit yeah. <laughs> be like oh, alright this is, this is the kill. I sliced Jimmy's throat uh, yeah Dude, like that job would be super shitty <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> just be like oh shit <laughs> okay the house is yours dude but like <laughs> oh shit so that should be uh, like how it how it would happen. Like you, if you have to execute all the residents of the house, prove that each of them are dead, and I think with kids you can just 
kids can't take on a, a mortgage or a house. So I think. Well, and is oh, it... that brings up another question: What happens if you freaking kill, kill the parents of a kid? Like obviously they have asshole. to go. I know, but you ha- they'd have to go into the foster system. That's true. That also brings up um, because I think I want to say I read it on like because there's actually like a new founding fathers website. No that, shit. Yeah, there actually really is. I'm like not joking here. Uh, that uh actually like explains like what rules that they're trying to get changed and what rules they have gotten changed. And one was upping the uh, purge age, and I think the purge age is sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So if you sixteen year old, you're in trouble, or someone under sixteen. No, it's you have to be sixteen to purge. Well, that seems like bullshit. Yeah. Right. I would get rid of that law completely. Yeah. I think there should be an age, like a legal age, that you sh- aren't allowed to. to I would agree. Purge a. And I think under person. sixteen makes sense. Like. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. If you can't drive, you can't purge. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I'm I'm assuming in like election year, those girls must have been like seventeen or eighteen. Yeah, they're probably pretty young. So I think that so with the houses, I think that should be a thing. Okay. That you have to prove that the homeowners of the house are dead. Yes. By whatever means, probably a picture. Yeah. Um, and then you, I, and then you can like f- fill out a like a form that says you're taking on the mortgage of said house. Otherwise, the house goes back to the bank, and then they sell it. Yeah. As bittersweet as that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, kids under sixteen are like I bet I think they should have to wear something special saying that they're like a safety vest not like a safety vest but like a um, like a like a gear okay of some sort that kind of like tracks their make sure they're still alive and then if they literally they're covered in bulletproof I feel they'd have to be cause you, no, you like, know I th- you're gonna get those like dickheads that are just like, oh, I don't care how young or young they are, I'm still gonna kill them. True, but yeah, I think yeah. that they should have, like, like a helmet or, like, something that they wear on their person. Like, maybe something that they just clip on their shirt that tracks their heart, make okay. sure that their heart's still beating, and if their heart stops beating, yeah. at, like, a moment's notice, it snapshots a picture and, and sends it to It's not a perjure this year. Yeah, like, that's like, I didn't purge. <laughs> but then it, like, will snap a picture of the, the killer. Yeah, okay. And then they could have one for, like, like one, like, maybe maybe a vest. Now that I think about a vest okay. that they have, like, strapped with, like, cameras on the sides and then one on the back and then one on the front. Okay. And then if, then they have to wear, like, a bracelet that's attached to the vest. So... Once their heart stops beating for any amount of time, then it psh, snaps a picture of their surroundings. Okay, yeah, I like it. And then that person obviously would be arrested. Yeah. Or shot. Or shot. Probably or shot. Yeah. <laughs> um. I don't think the government would really give two shits about arresting anyone on purge night. Yeah. It's like, probably eh. just be like, oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of logistics to how the purge would work. Yeah. Like, these are all stuff if we did the, the short film, or obviously not that short if we're planning on like an hour. Yeah. But if we do that, there's a lot of logistics that we would need to figure out with purge like legally what's allowed what's not mm-hmm. um, I agree we'd have to make come up with a prototype for a vest <laughs> yeah be like this is what kids under yeah. 16 wear <laughs> it says non purger on the back dude that'd be that, that would be a bitchin project that would be um 
obviously we need to give credit say the purge is not our idea yeah <laughs> we're just fixing all the plot holes <laughs> yeah. yep um I'm trying to think of other stuff that I can't really people can right do like there's nothing at a job that you could take like you can't promote yourself at a job if only right yeah right I mean, you could, well, you could like move your way up by going and purging the person next in line for, or That's, the, yeah, like whoever's in that position you want, knowing that you're the next person in line, yeah. or kill the next person in line because you know, whatever person's about to retire. Yeah, I don't think like, I really want to be the next produce manager. So I think I'm okay. <laughs> um, I'm done with assistant. Uh, yeah, I don't see. So job, I think that's all taken care of. Households, cars, basically any vehicle, you could just... Cheers. Yeah. As long as you, you just have to get the next the... day. No, I, I give it a, a oh, week. Oh, yeah, a week. Yeah. week afterward. Um, Seven days. It's not a bad amount of time. No, it's not. If you wait to the last minute, well, sucks to be you. Yeah. Um, robbery, you keep everything that you've stolen. Yeah. Um, what else? What other crimes are there? I think that's it. That's all I can think of. And then they have, like, government officials and stuff that can't be killed. Yeah, anybody above ranking them. But you can't kill celebrities. You can. Yeah. At least that's what I'm getting. (laughs) Dude, that'd be... You know, remember that CSI episode that Justin Bieber was in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could do use that clip and be like, yeah, Justin Bieber killed in The Purge. <laughs> <laughs> and then get people to, like, talk about what how they felt about... Like, we... Like, I think to start the pro- that project off, we'd have to get the clips together. Yeah. Think about big events, because this would obviously be years and in the future yeah uh like from the first purge but we could get well actually the first purge was uh supposed to I think took place last year 2017 oh shit yeah <laughs> we're a year behind <laughs> don't jinx this Rose it's gonna start like next year <laughs> sorry my bad um I should just say, like, we're in Utah. Nothing bad happens in Utah. I'm kidding. (laughs) I like how everyone said, like, no murder, just gay marriage. Yeah. But you need government officials to do that or someone to officiate and the paperwork. You're not going to get that (laughs) in a 12-hour span when everyone's locked up at home. No. I mean, Provo and Salt Lake would definitely be the worst places to be on Butters Night. Sorry, man. Yeah. Maybe Orm, too. Orm could be bad. Mm. I feel AF's pretty safe. Hell yeah. yeah. American Fork, Orm. I think Orm would... Orm would be... Orm would be okay, I think. Yeah, it I would, would just be like the borders near Provo. PG would be safe. I think PG would be okay. Long yeah. with Lehigh. Yeah. I think it's once you get to Sandy and forward. Yeah, then you're like, no. It's like the Sandy to Salt Lake area. Yeah. Anything past that, like Ogden, I mean, you're just going to get old people. Ogden's like the ideal place to be per night. Yeah, it is. It's just old people. Yeah. <laughs> They're just going to move slow. Yeah. <laughs> Steal meds. <laughs> That's all I got for British Dreamcast. Yeah. Now that we got the our our next film project. Yeah. Dude, I'm there. excited for that. Dude, that'd be freaking awesome. That would be. And we need to get like everyone we know involved. Yeah, because yeah, we're gonna need as much help as we can get. We just need to put up like a poster and and stuff saying. 
Like, I don't even know what we could offer. Just be like, hey, we'll... Not even food. Because we don't want to shoot in the same place. We just need to get people to say lines. So this is something we could easily set up. Yeah. And then just the interview part, Uh we could just go as we... Yeah, that's true. Like, so this is what I'm... I think with uh, with the film project, we film or we get footage like all the footage we can of crimes that happen outside, like found footage stuff, and then we get footage of like we just need to watch a lot of discovery shows, but just get like yeah. pictures of government buildings and stuff, kind of doing that then we just write the scripts for a certain type of person so like a congressman middle class housewife uh, homeless like those like just the type of person that needs to be do like talking about what we say yeah because we'll be doing most of the narrating yeah that's true and then we just get those people to film their bits and it's not going to be hard getting like a black background and no, it's not. with a lot of them in like the housewives and homeless we just film outside yeah oh my gosh dude yeah dude, this film project would be yeah. freaking bitching <laughs> together actually okay so that wraps it up for me yeah I understand. Okay, so that has been the Albro's Dreamcast of The Purge. Um, we're going to, or our reference fail tally for tonight. Rose, one. Damn Caleb, zero. Dude, I swear, if I lose three months in a row, it's bullshit. <laughs> if you lose, I say if you lose four in a row, yeah. then we need to come up with a better system. Yeah. I agree. We need to come up with something else that we can Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Screw each other's lives up with. Um so what do you want to do next week? That's a great question. Um because I know we got that recommendation for Boondock Saints. That's true. We could either do that or do like a big in-depth review of the Avengers. Oh well, yeah. So yeah, let's do let's do Avengers okay. uh, next week. So we'll be reviewing Avengers next week and then the following week. Do you want to do Boondock Saints? Yeah. Okay. It gives us a couple of weeks to watch it. Yeah. Um, because it's either on Amazon or um, Hulu. One I think two. I think the I'll probably just buy the Blu-ray. I think it's pretty cheap. Um, another one that I've heard is really good that kind of goes with Boondock Saints is uh, Reservoir Dogs. Yes, I've heard that's great. Yeah, so we need to do both of them. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that uh, that's what we'll do next week. So next week, expect an Avengers review, and then the next week we'll do uh, Boondock Saints, and then... Hopefully after that we'll have something else that we can do. Yeah, I've seen this movie for like five bucks at Target. Hell yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> All right. So, that being said, this has been the All Bros podcast. Um, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher. And when we get to it, also check out our stuff on YouTube. Still need to film that ex- that yeah. second part of the video. I know. We should do that next weekend. Yeah, I agree. Then, um, yeah, and then follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm not the best at posting. I'm um, working on it, though. Good um, job. Yeah, but Thanks. you can follow us on on those at the All Bros. Um, I, ch- I recently changed them, so it's just the all bros. Atta boy. And you can also email us at channel at gmail.com. Let us know if you have any recommendations for movies. Um, 
or if there's something you want us to discuss and stuff like that. Yeah. So, till next week, I am Kale Bowers and I am Jonathan Rose and this has been the All Bros All the bleh, All Bros podcast. So, deuces. Bye.